Good evening, Council, and thank you for the opportunity. Today I'll be walking you through the course of events that led to the unfortunate removal of lawful short-term rentals in Victoria. Please note that much of the information and research I will be presenting today is that of a local Victorian resident, Nicholas Reynolds. In slide one of this presentation, we've included a link to the folder containing this research. To begin, let's take a trip down memory lane and review three key events that occurred which led to Section 36 of Bill 35. In July of 2023, David Walksmith conducted a freelance report on behalf of the BC Hotel Association pertaining to the impact of short-term rentals in our province. More to come on that shortly. Then, on July 27th, at a City of Victoria Council of the Whole meeting, the short-term rental bylaw office team prepared and presented a package to city councillors misapplying data from the McGill report and overstating the impact of legal non-conforming short-term rentals on housing affordability. Finally, this incorrect data was leveraged as a lobbying tool to request that the province remove legal non-conforming rights. Let's do a deeper dive in each of these areas, and we'll start with the McGill report. Since its release, the McGill report was often touted as reliable based on the understanding that it was released from a reputable university. A Freedom of Information request was filed with McGill University to learn more about the report and its authorship. In their response to the Freedom of Information request, surprisingly, McGill University was quick to distance themselves. The Secretary General of McGill University said, and I quote, Please be advised that the above document was not published by McGill. The report was published by a freelance consultant. So who is the author of the air quotes McGill report? The answer is David Watchmouth, who in addition to writing BC's report, which was funded by the BC Hotel Association, also wrote similar reports on the New York market, which was commissioned by the Hotel Trades Council. It should also be noted that the McGill report deviates from the standards of independent academic research. Notably, it lacks independent peer review and publication, it frequently emotes, employs emotive language, and the report breaks a fundamental tenet of scientific reasoning, which is that correlation does not imply causality. Now let's fast forward to July 27, 2023, at the City of Victoria Council of the Whole meeting. In this meeting, the Short-Term Rental Bylaw Office applied data from the McGill report to Victoria, which overstated the impact of short-term rentals on affordability. The issue stems from an honest mistake on behalf of the short-term rental bylaw team, which had huge implications. The McGill report stated that when one short-term rental is added to 100 units of long-term rental stock, the total increase in rent equates to $48.65, or $0.49 cents per unit of long-term rental stock. Unfortunately, the short-term rental bylaw team misapplied this data, stating that one short-term rental affected each of the 100 long-term rental units at a price of $48.65 per unit. The implications of this mistake were significant. Due to this error, the City of Victoria staff analysis incorrectly concluded that 634 dedicated short-term rentals or legal non-conforming units led to an increase of $37.2 million or $1,152 per renting household annually. Now, when correctly applied, the McGill research would suggest that a one-time increase of $0.95 cents per renting household in Victoria. In other words, the impact of legal non-conforming short-term rentals on a renting household in Victoria is less than a cup of coffee. Between July and October of 2023, we know that there were advocacy efforts on behalf of the City of Victoria to encourage the province to adopt Section 36 of Bill 35. These advocacy efforts and lobbying efforts were based on poor data. An example of this is a post made on the Vancouver Island Housing Market Facebook group by Jeremy Caradona. The city does not want these short-term rentals to exist as they take about 1,000 units off the housing market and quantifiably lead to everyone else's rent being 15% higher. We have told the province that we want them 
to either regulate these legacy short-term rentals out of existence or give us the ability to do so. And in response to that, Section 36 of Bill 35 was written. And here is Ravi, the Housing Minister, speaking to this. I can share with the member that uh, Victoria did ask us to remove that uh, that provision. Um, um, and there's a significant amount of communities, uh, units within uh, Victoria on the list. So in summary, we know that the McGill report was a biased report that was funded by the BC Hotel Association. We know that the City of Victoria bylaw office team misapplied that data and overstated the impact of short-term rentals, notably legal non-conforming short-term rentals in the Victoria area. This miscalculation was then brought forward in advocacy efforts to the province to create Section 36 of Bill 35, stripping property rights from folks in BC and Victoria notably. Since the drafting of Bill 35, we want to acknowledge the engagement the association has received from the city. Many councillors have taken time out of their schedules to meet with us directly and hear our concerns, and for that, we sincerely thank you. That said, the unintended consequences of the removal of lawfully operating short-term rentals is clear. We continue to seek your support and partnership in finding a solution that benefits our great city. Thank you.